Java is a general purpose computer programming language that is concurrent, class-based, object-oriented, and specifically designed to have as few implementation dependencies as possible. Uh, it is intended to let application developers write once, run anywhere, popularly known as Aura, meaning that a compiled Java code can run in all platforms that support Java without the need of recompilation. Java applications are typically compiled into bytecode, that can run on any Java virtual machine or JVM, regardless of computer's architecture. As of 2015, Java is one of the most popular programming languages in use, particularly for client-server web applications, with a reported 9 million developers. Java was originally developed by James Gosling at Sun Microsystems, which has since merged into Oracle Corporation and released in 1995 as a core component of Sun Microsystems Java platform. The language derives most of its syntax from C and C++, but has fewer low-level facilities than either of them. The original and reference implementation of Java compilers, virtual machines, and class libraries were originally released by Sun under proprietary licenses. As of May 2007, in compliance with the specification of Java Community Process, or JCP, Sun re-licensed re most of its technologies under the GNU General Public License. Now let's have a look at the learning objectives. Now here are some of the specific learning objectives of this course. And after completing this course, you should be able to understand object-oriented concepts write Java programs using core concepts, apply object-oriented concepts to the Java programming language, write Java programs to handle runtime errors, popularly known as exceptions, read and write different types of data from or the files, understand very powerful collection framework provided in Java, understand multitasking in Java using something called threads, understand the basic concepts of annotations, logging, unit testing using JUnit, and Apache Ant. Let's, do, let's have a look at the modules of this particular course. There are overall 14 modules. In the first module, we will learn about a brief history of Java and get an overview of how a Java program is written, compiled, executed. We'll also get to know how to use most popular ID called Eclipse. The second module, you will be introduced with the concepts around object-oriented programming. It's very important to understand this so that you will be able to apply this in Java. In the third module, you will be able to familiarize yourself with the basic syntax, programming constructs such as for loop or an if condition, working with arrays and so on. In the fourth module, you will be learning how to apply the learned object-oriented concepts in Java programming world. The fifth module will help you understand runtime errors called exceptions and write Java programs to handle them. In the sixth module, you will learn about input-output streams and how to work with files. The subsequent module, the seventh one, will explore Java's very powerful collection framework. Now this is as an alternate to work with arrays. In the eighth module, you will learn some utility classes such as resource bundle, properties, formatting dates, using date format and simple date format, working with the wrapper classes, and something called scanners. The ninth module will teach you how to execute parts of a program concurrently, meaning parallel execution. So this is done with the help of something called threads. Now you will also learn the issues involved in sharing a resource between multiple threads, and how do you handle such scenarios? In the 10th module, you will be introduced with the concepts of annotations and their usage in Java. Annotations were introduced in Java 1.5. In the 11th module, you will get an introduction to logging mechanism in Java. A logger class was introduced in Java 1.4. However, there are third-party frameworks available for doing so. One very popular one is from Apache, which is called Log4j. In the 12th module, you will learn unit testing, which is a very important aspect of any test-driven development. Now, we use JUnit as part of testing. 
In the 13th module, you will learn what is the process of software building and the different tools involved and particularly one tool called Apache Ant. Finally, the last module, which is the 14th one, will help you understand some of the best practices to be followed while coding Java programs. Now, with all these known, I wish you all the very best and happy learning.